Hello, welcome back. Today we're talking about TrackMan and we're going to start diving into how to read the uh, data report that you're going to get. So today is all about spin rate. So spin rate is important because it helps determine how late and how sharp the pitch breaks are. Um, so, and it also helps you kind of put yourself in a category where you'll be more effective by throwing the types of pitches that are more suited to your spin rate. So for example, you might not spin the ball very well at all. You're going to be throwing sinkers, change-ups, splitters, knuckleballs things that don't require a lot of spin to break and be really effective. Versus if you are a high spin rate guy, uh, you might be throwing four seam fastballs that ride a lot and sliders and curveballs um, that require a lot of spin to be effective. So here's the easiest way to think about spinning. If I hit a cue ball, and or I'm playing pool, right? And I hit a cue ball backwards, and my intent is to backspin it. So I hit it, I backspin it, and I backspin it really hard. So it kicks out, and then it spins in space for a second, and then it comes back really fast to me. That is representative of a high spin pitch. And the reason being is, so I think about it in space, uh, baseball in space, as if I spin it really, really fast, it's spinning so fast that the air can't grab it until it slows down enough where the air can grab it, just like my cue ball, where it spins and then it's gonna slow down and catch the felt and come back. So I spin it really fast to delay the movement. So it's going to break later and it's gonna break sharper. So the ball is spinning and it's slowing down and then it catches the air and it bites. And that's how I kind of think about it in my head. I don't know if that's scientifically correct, but that's a good image to kind of give yourself where if I'm spinning it really fast, I'm delaying the movement. And the other way, if I don't spin it really well, you typically see really big breaks, um, really slow, gradual breaks. They're not the short bite ones that you see uh, the guys in the big leagues throw mostly. There's always um, like, like rules um, that are broken, but the the spin is going to really affect that. So that's why I mentioned earlier, some of the pitches and the pitches that you pick might be dependent on um, how well you throw. So I break the rule a little bit because I throw a sinker, but I throw a high spin rate sinker. So it's not that you can only throw sinkers if you throw slow and only throw four seamers if you throw a high spin rate fastball. Um, you can do both or um, you can do the one that suits you well. But these are general categories and ways to think about it. All right, so let's take a look at the actual track main report that you might get on a iPad. Um, this will update pitch to pitch, um, so you'll know the data on the pitch that you just threw. Um, this picture is taken from TrackMan's Facebook page. Um, this is not my data and this is not my photo. This is TrackMan's. But we're going to use it today because it's an excellent representation of kind of what we're talking about. So this is a general report. And if you look up in the top right corner, you have a graph with vertical movement, horizontal movement. And then you look down and there's a baseball looking thing. And just to the left of that is speed, spin, and tilt. So we're talking about the spin today. So in this particular pitch, the spin was 1644 RPM and it was classified as a sinker. So as I discussed earlier, the lower spin rates are typically the sinkers 
um, and the high spin rates are typically the four seam fastballs. Um, this is not always the case, but in general speaking terms. So if we're looking for specifically spin, and that's what we're working on today, it's going to be right in the middle um, next to the baseball thing, and it's going to be 1644 RPM. In this next frame, it, here's the spin rate for fastballs um, across the MLB, college baseball, and high school baseball. Uh, this photo is also not mine. This is from Trackman's Facebook. Um, but they have this the top percentages on what the spin rates are. So you can get a really good idea on where you kind of uh, stack up against the best in the world um, versus college players versus high school players. So one thing to note is the last pitch was 1600 RPM. That was slower um, than the top 90% in all of MLB. So the top 90% in all of MLB is 2031 RPM. So that is a really, really slow uh, sinker, slow spin sinker. Um, and that's it's going to attribute to some of its movement profile because it spins slow. But that's something to take a look at. Um, the spins do go down as you get younger and younger and into youth baseball. I think a lot of that's just because of strength and velocity and just your overall feel of the baseball and how you throw it. In comparison to the fastball, if you look at the top 10% in MLB, those guys are spinning it at 2,935 RPM. That is significantly faster than the fastball top 10% in the MLB at 2,488 RPM. So it goes up nearly 500 RPM um, just from fastball to slider. So when I was talking about delaying the break and making it break late and break sharp, you use the spin to do that and the averages show that. So this is ma making note, um, your numbers may not look like this. And if you're a youth player, they probably shouldn't look like this yet. Um, but these are the best in the world. And these are the best, these are the top 10% of the best in the world spinning at this rate. So this is just aimed to help you figure out what you do well, where you stack up against some of the averages, and then you'll better be able to better pitch and design your pitches um, around that data and that information.